Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. In this video, I want to show you guys how you can make 808s in Ableton using Operator. This is going to be the first video of a two-part series where I'm going to show you how to make 808s in Ableton, and I'm going to show you how to make 808s in Expert's Serum. There's going to be a lot of crossover concepts, but I'm going to show you how to do them separately within those two tools. Before we get into the video, I also want to mention this video is sponsored by Odyssey Headphones. Odyssey creates the headphones I am wearing right here. I mean it when I say I love them. They've become an incredible part of my workflow. They really affect the way I mix down music, but even the way I write it. The clarity, the perception of dynamic, space, tone, timbre, frequencies, makes me make decisions musically. So not only are these really good headphones just for an engineering standpoint, but they're actually just really good headphones in terms of in terms of improving overall musicality when I'm making decisions in my DAW. So if you guys want to check out more headphones by Odyssey, check out the link in the description. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. So I've hopped over to Ableton here and I have Operator. And the first thing I want to talk about is just quite simply the pitch. First and foremost, with an 808, you need to be using the right pitch. So you have two options. You can leave it in the regular unfixed mode where it's just going to scale to your keyboard in which case you're gonna to have to play in a pretty low octave range around there. If you don't have the right headphones or the right speakers, you might not even be able to pick that up. Or additionally, you have the option of just doing a fixed frequency where it just kind of hits where you want. I personally recommend against this just because it's nicer to actually be able to play different notes and different melodies with your 808. So that's step one. Now step two is actually controlling the envelope of the 808. And what do I mean by that? Well, right now, and I'm just gonna quickly change the sound so you guys can hear this a little better. Right now, what's happening is when I hold a note down, it sustains that note for the entire amount of time. So what we want to happen is we want that to decay because if you think of an 808, it's a big and it fades out over time. So what we want to do is we want to head on over to the envelope of whatever oscillator or operator we are using. In this case, we're just sticking with the first one. And I want to control this envelope. So there's a couple things you need to do. First of all, you don't want it to sustain at full volume. You want it to slowly decay in volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the sustain amount and then this decay time is how long it takes to get to that point. So that's too short, obviously. That's not bad. I think we could even go longer. Somewhere in the middle there is probably nice. Now the problem though is that currently if I let go of a note, it just stops which isn't very natural for an 808. So if you want it to have a tail when you release a note, if you don't hold it for the full seven seconds, then you do need to add release as well. Another reason release is important is if we're working with just a pure sine wave, I'm gonna go back to a sine wave, and we don't have release. Hear that little click? Hear there's a click at the end? That's because there's no release time. So you're at least going to need a little bit to get rid of the click or a longer one if you want a nice ring out. And this is cool because we have two options. You can hold a MIDI note but release it if you want a, a quicker stop. Or you can just hold it for the full amount of boom and impact and volume decay of that 808. So now we want to start thinking about punch because right now it's just a sine wave going down in volume. So this is where the pitch envelope is going to be absolutely vital. So this pitch envelope section is for the context of this 808, your punch section. This is where you add punch to your sound. And how you do this is you want to set this pitch envelope to 100%, which means it's going to go the full 100% range of the peak volume down to the sustain amount. So currently we're dropping one octave from this point to this point over 600 milliseconds. Here we already got a little bit of punch there. So I like to sit around two octaves. You wanna play with what feels right for you for your type of sound. Because here that's got 
a nice impact to it. Now, if you notice this little dot here, you also have a curve to this, so you can have it be more of like a sub drop or the, sh the more exponentially quick it goes down, the more punchy it is. That's nice. I don't even think I need to play with the time value. If I wanted to, I could play with this decay value to make it shorter or longer. But I actually really liked it where it was sitting. Again, you're going to be playing with what feels right for you. So I kind of li like the decay time where it's at. I can play with it if I so choose. So that's the pitch envelope part. That's going to be important for getting the punch. Next is tone. And this is where things get a little fun, uh, especially with operator. So if we head on over to our uh, first operator here, and we head on over to the oscillator section, you are presented with the harmonic series all the way up until the 64th harmonic, or you can even make it smaller if you just want like 16, 32, 64. So what happens is we have the root here. So this is the pitch you're playing. So if I'm playing C, this root is C. But then we have the harmonic series after that. So check this out. So we can start to kind of implement these harmonic structures into the sound. Now, I like to keep things minimal, so I usually like to do like a little bit of the second and third and fourth and fifth harmonic. So you're kind of discreetly inputting tone, or I'm actually gonna show you my preferred way of adding tone. And how you do that is actually implementing FM synthesis. Because we're an operator, this operator here is modulating this carrier. So you got a modulator, you got a carrier, and they're gonna be modulating each other. So as we turn up this value, that modulation adds to the tone. But what's really cool is when you don't just use the first harmonic for the modulator, and you start to try other ones. It's kind of like a house bass. I really like that overtone. I'm going to stick with that one. That one's really nice. The only thing you have to be aware of is the more you add harmonics in, the more this punch kind of becomes a little obvious. You get more high frequencies coming through in the punch, and it, it, it's not quite as nice, but if you have to adjust, you can. Now, at this point, we've got another problem. Currently, this is polyphonic, and what that means is I can play more than one note at a time. So if I play a note, and I play another note, I'm playing a disgusting 808 chord. We don't want that. We want the notes to glide between each other, because you could hear often 808s do these cool kind of gliding features. Well, if, you, some, if some of you guys look down, you see this little glide button right here with a time value. Now immediately, it's not gonna quite work the way we want because we're still polyphonic. So what you have to do is, is go over to the kind of global section here and you'll see this voice section here. So this means right now I can play up to six notes polyphonically at the same time. If we switch this to one, we are now monophonic and thus, did you hear that glide? So now your notes can glide between each other and you can simply change that time value here. Now there's a couple other ways you can make your 808 sound cooler. One way is that you can implement a little bit of noise inside of operators. So if you go to this noise section here, You can add just the slightest bit of texture in there, but be careful this is noise FMing. So if you are going to implement noise, it's usually better if the noise is just running side by side. So you probably want to pick a different mode, um, such as this one here, where the noise is running beside it. Also note that as you add other layers separately like that, and I 
just took a few steps back but when you add other layers like that their envelopes are different than the original envelope so you will have to sculpt that if you so choose now the last thing i recommend for making your 808s in operator is when you go into the filter section here you have a built-in distortion unit this shaper with a soft hard sign and four bit version which you can turn on and add drive to get even more tone. It's a bit much. And that's a little crazy, but I like the soft one. Maybe we can go back in here, not only have FM, let's also add another harmonic or two. Let's play with the pitch. Maybe let's try only one octave. No, it's better with two. So what happens if your 808 gets a little too knocky like this one, where there's a lot of frequencies uh, from the added harmonics and the punch? You can add a little bit of an attack on the original envelope. And see how it gets a little bit of the knock out of it? So it's not quite as clicky if you don't like that sound. Yeah, that's a bit of a softer transient. And there we go. That's a pretty banging 808. So you saw with all those steps, there were lots of room. There was lots of room to get creative in terms of what you want, but you really want to approach all those different steps the way you want to do it. So once again, kind of a quick summary, you want to set some sort of volume envelope for the sound. This is how the 808 comes in and fades out so it's not just a stagnant sine wave. You then want to play with the pitch envelope to implement a level of punch to the sound because otherwise it's just a single pitch and it's just stagnant. You need it to do, need that do, which comes from pitch envelopes. Also a special thing to note, you can do that to any sound if you want to add a little bit of punch. After that, you won't really want to play with the tonal characteristic. So for example, you could FM or you could draw in specific harmonics. It's really up to you to get creative with operator in that way. You can even add noise for a little bit of texture and flutter on top. And then lastly, you finish off with some kind of nice finishing touches. For example, you want to make it monophonic here so you can play with the glide section here. And in the filter section, you have distortion. So there we go. That was a quick crash course on how I do 808s in Operator in Ableton. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. If you have any questions, let me know in the YouTube comments. And I'll be back soon with part two, how to make 808s in Serum. Thanks, guys. I'm Kermode. Peace.